Well, this movie was quite surprising. Hello, greetings everybody. It is I, the Timeless Cyber Knight, and I'm talking about a new, well, pretty much a well-successful Norwegian film. That is pretty much what they call a Norwegian King Kong, because, man, it feels like a King Kong, but its own thing. Which is called Troll. It's literally been released now on Netflix. And it's a Norwegian product. That is pretty much better than ho any Hollywood films that I've seen so far. Huh? Like. Yeah. You'll be sure to hear me say that. But uh, yeah. This literally is like a goddamn love letter. To the classic monster films. Like Godzilla, King Kong. And even the science fiction films Jurassic Park. But. It doesn't feel like a copycat. It feels like a own genuine product that literally pays a march to them. But it feels like its own thing. Like. This film. Literally surprised me. Because. I was just walking out in from the living room. Just going to grab my food. My food that my mom literally well brought after. A visit to my sister. Yeah, I'm literally still living at well my own place, but still connected to where uh, my parents, my mom's uh, apartment. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is that uh, after I literally grabbed my f food, she put up this film, and I'm glad I actually watched this because this was wor worth my time. And that's saying much because I literally. And the sick and tired of seeing same old shit that Hollywood slacking off with their products. Because, let's be honest, as you see in this film, you know that f goddamn Hollywood f is like a goddamn cemetery of good storytelling. And this proves it, because just like Godzilla 1954, this film kicks any Hollywood products as this year to oblivion because wow was this fucking good like okay let me just bring out the overall story before i just roast the mcu and jurassic world yeah i'm just gonna say that because yeah fucking multiverse madness fuck love and thunder and fuck dominion because yeah this brings me even more courage. <laughs> okay, so pretty much the story is, well, just like in, because it is pretty much aware that it is a monster flick. It is self-aware. And unlike any, well, modern Hollywood flicks and shows where they struggle, this one, nah, it's straight to the point, it's a monster flick. But it is a good one. Like, they... Which um, the story literally is about a well, no, a tough uh, paleontologist, female paleontologist, which probably is the best female lead we gotten so far. This, like forever, yeah, I'm literally shooting all, which literally just puts a middle finger to the Hollywood garbage that they call a good female lead because nah, this Norwegian film. Literally proves that female leads can be good. If done right. Anyway. A female, lead, female paleontologist. Who is literally fearless. Was brought in by the authority. Uh, after. Well. I'm going to bring out the overall story right here. Yeah. By the way. This film was literally. Well. The director, well, Roar Arthog, and the people that literally, well, made this film. It, I can tell this Netflix film was put a lot of love. Because, wow. Norwegian? Scandinavian? People, my Scandinavian neighbor, literally made this film. 
yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> just before I was uh, out of the uh, outside of my well, the line that I was trying to say, which I will say, well, the overall story, well, just like any, it is a monster flick where something woke up after some dump when they literally tried to excavate and literally exploded a mountain. They accidentally woke up something from the Norwegian the mountains, which was, which turns out was an ancient troll, which officials literally pointed a, this fearless paleontologist for female to, which they, she helps out to literally stop it from reckoning deadly havoc from, well, Norway. Onto Oslo, which is literally literally the city, because uh, yeah, it's literally wow. It is straightforward, but damn, <laughs> I'm still lost with words because well, I'm still trying to bring myself together. But how can I be straight out together when? Well, I seen a film that's literally not a Hollywood flick. Literally outdoing Hollywood right now. Because the story overall it has well it has monster havoc but it also has a uh, well good story writing it has some good cinematography. It has some good, well, CGI for once, which I will talk a lot about later. But uh, the overall, well, well, when you see the cat, it, the overall theming of it, like you can feel the overall story, the mythology, the overall story, the fantasy about the trolls and how it functions. And why it's also doing it and such. It feels so damn genuine. And honestly, when it comes to pacing, they pace it really well. Like, it doesn't feel like so damn forced or sloppily added together. Nah, this feels like they knew what they were doing. Like, when, when there's time when they, it's going to get somber, it's getting somber. When they're going to pretty much show, well, the overall destruction, they show destruction. And when they're going, well, pretty much expedition or something like that, they do it well. Like, it's shocking. I know. Like, it's not, pretty, I'm not saying it's pretty damn perfect, but I'm saying it's pretty much doing per perfectly better than Hollywood right now. It's ah, how can billions of dollars of from a million dollar project from Hollywood be outdone by a fucking Norwegian film? Like, this really just puts a smile on my face. This literally make, gives me courage to make my own film if I ever have the courage to actually do that, which I probably will in the future, but just. This film literally shows that there is creativity in storytelling. And of course, with storytelling, it also has to have some good special effects, which this one does. It may not be perfect, but it feels real when it has to be. Because, yes, there are some such where there's literally CGI, but the textures, they put some time on it, and even the vehicles, which they, if, when, even if it has some sloppiness, it is an over sloppiness like any Hollywood film. It does have time to make it feel like a Hollywood, an actual, well, an aircraft or a, a tank or vehicles which they feel like genuine actual tanks. And when they have, well, overall city destruction or buildings being destroyed it does that well 
Now, let me also tell you those overall sound effects. Like, wow, they are good. Like, literally, it literally has some feeling of presence. It feels f a really refreshing one. And then you have one thing that's also really impressive is the overall design of the troll. If it looks like a troll, but it also looks like it's pretty much blending in with the environment. And the overall facial expression, while I know people are saying they cannot take serious of the, about the beard, but tr some trolls do have facial hairs. And even the hair, hair at the top, because it has some, the, every troll is pretty much different from one of other. And uh, what I also love is that it has a tail. Like, literally. <laughs> it just brings me a smile to see something who looks like King Kong, but it feels like, well, its own creature. It's like him and fucking King Kong literally would be pals because they know that people can be dicks sometimes. And boy, when... The times when it feels also emotional, you can see its facial expression. It feels like an actual creature that's just wandering around doing some havoc because, because right, because uh, you can feel sorry for this creature even though it does do what it has. It, you know, it's still a destructive force, but it also is not pure evil. It's just. Well, let's go to the overall characters. We started off with the troll. Yeah, the troll. Yeah, he's literally so, so, so. It's just. Yeah, there are times where it feels, well, like a genuine creature that's just, well, doing what it does. Like, it's still pure. It does have a good heart, but it still hates uh, people who just did, did some bad stuff. Or literally just, well,. Disturbing it for what it's doing. Like. It's like. Well King Kong or Godzilla. They aren't pure evil. Well Godzilla is like. Originally was a pretty much. A, well an enemy. But it's also still. Well. Still an animal that isn't just pure evil. Even though it was pretty much. Uh, just. Pretty much a force of nature. It still has some good heart in it. And this troll. Pretty much doing. It's own thing. And it also has the same feature as actual trolls. As it was pretty much described as. Um, that you would know. In folklore. And fantasy. And the characters. Man the characters. They are honestly. Good characters, uh, better good characters that I've seen from all, better than Hollywood's. I'll tell you that because the main lead, which uh, is literally well, I'm gonna look up with uh, the actors on this one, but uh, right now because I am so damn credible, credibly well surprised that. Uh, Hmm. I hope this is one. Yeah. I'm looking up the overall uh, actors that's pretty much played, which all, all of them are Norwegian. Like, uh, Nora, played by Ine Marie Wilhelm. A man. Well, actually. Yeah. Wilman. It's pretty much a better female lead that we've gotten so far. Well, this year and um, pretty much, well, better than what Hollywood is doing right now with their female leads. Because honestly, while being a female scientist, there is a, well, fe she does feels like, yeah, that uh, she has a past that, well, she pretty much changed be due to some events and even, but even if it happens, she does do, she has a goal that she wants to achieve. And uh, even with uh, 
is her fault. Hmm. Because of her relationship with her father, which uh, is played by the well, God be Elseworld, the uh, Elseworld, who uh, in his past literally lost his job due to uh, prove, pretty much trying to prove the existence of trolls. And uh, she kind of, while well, they both had some conflicts, a little bit here and there, but uh, they don't hate each other that much. She just thinks of him like uh, pretty much a crazy person, which people would think when they are talking about some folklore. But there are times where they actually feels like a father, mother, well, father and daughter actual relationship. They have a chemistry that really, really, really feels emotional and actually heartwarming. And of course, the other, her other colleagues, like Andreas, playing by S. Kim S. Falk Jorgensen. Jorgensen. He is very good as well. Of course, being a, like a quirky, well, like a supporter, trying to how do I say the word? Well, the prime minister's advisor. That's literally what he is. Which uh, the he's just here to literally pretty much uh, helping out, trying to uh, discover what who what the hell the creature is. But uh, there are also times where he actually well. He doesn't uh, play like a fool. He knows what the hell is going on. And of course, with the help of uh, Christopher, played by Mads uh, school guard uh, Peterson. Yeah, this is literally a military guy that isn't just a fucking dickhead. But it feels like he's li really there trying to help all the citizens. And honestly, he is, <laughs> he's, he's, he's so damn genuine. He's like... Yes, they are some fucking problem, but he's not gonna be a fucking shitty asshole all the time. And this guy is literally, well, really enjoyable to watch as well. Like, he really, you do take it seriously with orders and such, but there's also times where he also there to help out. Like, man, when I see these characters, it's just, man, just big thumbs up. And of course, the Prime Minister and the other people that's literally there, they do feel like human. Even the guy that's literally also, well, pretty much feeling like an asshole, he's doing it because he's just trying to do his job and even, well, a little bit forced, but then again, still better than the other dickheads that we've saw in the Hollywood films. Like, he, he just wants to pretty much stop the creature, even though he... He's pretty much uh, doing some, well, feels like a bit of a dick at some point, but uh, honestly, in a situation like that, I do feel like there are people that really want to be, trying to be assholes here and there, but generally, this is like a pop conflict, but I don't have to go to the cinema because we have Netflix. And when Netflix does good pop conflicts, I think we found a gold mine. But of course, uh, we also want to have some more recognition like these films to support like the overall monster flicks. Because just like Godzilla vs. Kong, which I still really love, but uh, there are also some points where I also feel like uh, the people could have been a little bit better. These people, I want to see like that. Like, genuine people that just are trying to stop their thing, but, of course, want some chemistry to it. To pretty much holding, they're like the glue that holds the film together. Because while we like to watch, the, well, monsters as well, we want good human characters. And these are the proof that literally tells us they are there to holding the glue to get, to holding the overall script together to give us a genuine a genuine good pop conflict 
but it was a good monster film. And honestly, I recommend you all to watch it. Like right now. Just stop what you're watching right now and watch it. But before you do that, make sure to leave a subscribe to hit the like and subscribe. And also hit the notification bell button to support me even further because yeah, I'm literally doing more experimental with my overall list stories and such because man Woo, we need projects like these because right now when uh, when Hollywood is pretty much doing well dumb shit that is literally just well sick and tiring because I'm still looking forward to other films but uh, I really want them to be good because I'm done seeing such fucking awful crap that studios just putting out because of money. I'm not at you, Disney. But uh, yeah, this and even uh, the upcoming Rise of the Beast, which I really hope is good. Please be good. But let's. Hey, anything will. If anything is good, better than Disney products, I'm here for it. Don't expect me to review Wakanda Forever. No, yes, no, no. But that, go watch it. Because uh, the Timeless Night literally states you all to support something that is literally a Norwegian film that's literally better than the other films that we've seen so far. That's literally been released. I hope. Yes, because I want to support other projects and expand the overall, uh, well, original ideas and even the overall monster flick. Because I do want to see good ones. Anyways, that's all I had to say. Thank you all so much for watching. And this is the Timeless Night, Timeless Cyber Night here. Wishing you all a a, a wonderful time and remember you don't only time will tell what my next review is going to be peace out